Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the remedies playlist from Exotic Astrology and we have already discussed the remedies for Venus, Sun and Moon and today we are back with 21 remedies for Jupiter. The number 3 in numerology is Jupiter's number and that is why I have made 21 remedies but there are 21,000 remedies. <laughs> Alright, so if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life then you can go to my website down in the description section and if you have not watched the remedy videos for venus sun and moon please watch it down below in the description section and i will also make the videos for mars and saturn and rahu ketu and all the planets all right so just be patient with me and there you go 21 remedies for jupiter and who should do these remedies well if your jupiter is good bad nice very bad worst or the best everybody can do these so that you can improve all right so no distinction on those regards and these remedies will help you at a material level at a spiritual level at an emotional psychological psychophysical at a mental level all right overall well-being so what is the first remedy this is the most 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 important remedy actually you do all the other remedies but if you do not do this the first two actually all other remedies will fail okay so therefore make a note of this all the remedies but the first two are the most important okay so the first remedies <clears throat> we should uh, try to have connection with our guru that is the most important remedy that is the most important thing in spiritual life spiritual life has many facets to it like reading uh, scriptures then chanting mantras then traveling to holy places and meeting spiritual people all these things are fine but the most important and most crucial is that we have a personal connection to our guru all right if we have that then we are safe and secure in spiritual life and i would like to uh, validate this from the Srimad bhagavatam which exclusively mentions about this okay so fifth canto fifth uh, chapter second shloka 5.5.2 has this famous 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 shloka which is Mahat Sevam Dwar Ahur Vimuktesh. This means one can attain the path of liberation from material bondage only by rendering service to highly advanced spiritual personalities. Okay, so you may make a lot of spiritual progress by doing so many spiritual activities, but if you don't do this one thing, it is like uh, all others are like zeros, and then this is like the one. Okay, so if there are 10 zeros or 100 zeros it's still a zero but this one when you add it can become 1 million 1 billion 1 trillion so this is like that one which you add all right and our lord krishna also says in the gita mahatmanas to maam partha daivim prakriti masritam all right and krishna says to arjuna also tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadek chanti te gyanam gyani nastatva darshina that one should uh, inquire humbly from the great souls and render service. Tad vidhi pranipatena pariprasnena seva. All right. And uh, the inquiry which we do should be done in a mood of humility and not out of arrogance or audacity. All right. That's very important. This is very, very, very crucial. Number two, this is equally important. Even if you don't have number one, many people they are searching a guru and they are not able to find. But even if you have number two, this will lead to number one, okay? So number two is you must have strong commun communication with members of these spiritual communities because uh, Kali Yuga is like an ocean. Srimad Bhagavatam says, Kale dosha nidhe rajan asti hi ekan mahat gunan kirtana deva krishnasya mukta sanga parambade. Sukhdev Goswami, the son of Maharishi Vyas, says this to Parikshit Maharaj, who is the grand grandson of Arjuna and son of Abhimanyu, who is about to leave his body after seven days of getting a curse. And um, Sukhdev Goswami tells him that Kaler Dosha Nidhe Rajan, which means Kaliuga is an ocean of faults, my dear king. 
asti hi ekan mahat gunan there is one great quality you know kirtana deva krishna sya mukta sanga param braje that one who chants the holy name of krishna vishnu or ram he gets mukta sanga param braje okay but we cannot do that alone because many times i give lot of remedies to people and then they do it but after some time they feel that they are not able to do why not because they don't have determination but in kali yuga the forces which pull us down they are very strong all right so we cannot do it alone we need the support and help of others and the shrimad bhagavatam also says you know nama sankirtanam yasya sarva papa pranashanam pranamo dukha samana stvam namami harim param so this this shloka is very beautiful this is there in the last you know of the shrimad bhagavatam so therefore uh, this means that uh, we should always do in congregation okay which means if you have some members of the spiritual communities within your city you should always get together in the weekends okay and then you should uh, discuss about the scriptural truths as lord krishna says in gita na मत चित्ता मत कथा प्राणा बोधयंत परस्परम कथयन तस्य माम नित्यं तुष्यन्ति च रमन्ति च तुष्यन्ति च रमन्ति च व्हिच मींस मत चित्ता मत गता प्राणा व्हिच मींस व्हेन ग्रेट सोल्स दे मीट दे माय डिवोटीज दे डिस्कस अबाउट मी दे टॉक अबाउट मी सब्जेक्ट्स रिलेटेड टू मी बोधयंत परस्परम कथयन तस्य माम नित्यं नित्यं मींस इटर्नली ऑलवेज ओके so we cannot do it uh, nityam we can do it at least uh, on saturdays or sundays okay that's very crucial then number 3 this is this is not a remedy but this is a base for spiritual life okay your spiritual advancement can be judged by this third principle which means uh, to the degree you are able to follow these uh, there are four principles mentioned in point number 3 to the degree you are able to follow these four principles properly to that degree you can understand that you are making spiritual progress or you are uh, going up in spiritual life to the degree you are not able to follow these principles to that degree your spiritual life is going down all right so therefore what are these principles these are known as the regulative principles of freedom which is mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam so there are four regulative principles which the scriptures advise every human being to follow and the first one is of course uh, no meat eating because uh, meat is a violence and meat is uh, taking eating meat means you are taking away the free will from a living entity a living being to live actually so therefore that is punishable and anybody who is eating meat will suffer either in this life or in next and this is not some dogmatic uh, religious uh, indoctrination this is bare common sense you know? if you kill another human being the court will punish you right you will be hanged or you may be getting a lifetime imprisonment so if you kill an animal then god will punish you because he doesn't like his uh, children being killed okay so therefore we should abstain from this okay we should shift to a vegetarian diet completely many times people have this foolish ideas you know some meat is good good bit of meat is good no it's all nonsense all right meat fish and eggs all three are included for westerners especially I have to include fish and eggs because many times in the west uh, they think fish and eggs are not included in this okay meat but yes meat fish and eggs we need to completely abstain okay then it is intoxication any kind of intoxication that we are doing you know like uh, smoking drinking drugs or any kind of intoxication that will totally pollute our consciousness and it puts us in tamaguna actually okay then the next is of course gambling hmm? gambling is like doing any kind of this betting and all this stuff you know or indulging too much in all these shares and all this because that disturbs the mind you know or today things are going up tomorrow is going down and gambling makes you speak speak lies basically all right and the fourth principle is uh, no illicit sex which means premarital sex or sex uh, outside marriage okay so that that is not recommended by the scriptures although there is this uh, so called uh, superficial free sex movement these days you know everybody is just uh, becoming more animalistic and they are aggravating their minds and the minds of others also all right so that will make us uh, like dogs and cats and pigs actually so that's the difference between human beings and uh, 
animals that human beings are supposed to lead a dis uh, restricted disciplined sex life okay and if they do not lead this then it will lead to the degradation of human race so these four principles to the extent you are able to follow uh, because these four represent the four uh, principles of dharma actually okay we will discuss about that some other time but these principles are very important so try to follow them to whatever extent you can then number four is another base for your spiritual life this fourth principle very important it is getting up during the brahma muhurat okay or at the brahma muhurat is one and a half hours before your sunrise okay or at the least even even if you cannot do that then you should try to be ready after taking a bath and you should be able to see the sunrise okay ideally you should be ready one hour before that but if you still cannot then at least uh, you should be able to see the sunrise many times i i know people who say that oh the sunrise was two hours before <laughs> i got up so then this is not very good because uh, if the brahma muhurta time is the most important time of the day for spiritual practices okay uh, unless the mantras which you are doing or the practices should be done exclusively in the night all other practices should be done during brahma muhurta okay this is ideal now you may not be able to do it but you should aspire to come to that okay so gradually you should uh, try to uh, sleep early and then get up early actually okay so therefore brahma muhurta is very crucial and now sometimes here in europe especially during summer you know summer is very the sunrise is very early sometimes you know 3:30 4 4:30 so at that time when it's extreme we can fix that uh, around 4 we get up and by 4:30 we are ready okay because that's generally the time for brahma muhurta in india 4:30 am okay so 4:30 to 6 you can consider as brahma muhurta if you have confusion for summer country what latitude longitude so forget all this you can take 4:30 am and 4:30 am to 6 am okay so you must chant your mantras during that time that will help you very much okay then we have the fifth remedy this is a remedy for uh, this is a mantra actually which we need to chant if we want to improve our jupiter this is uh for the vishnu avatar which is related to the planet jupiter okay and he is vaman dev we all know that so the mantra is om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya okay this is a mantra for the 12th house especially okay dwadash akshari mantra this is, this is a very crucial mantra so therefore anybody who chants this will gradually obtain spiritual elevation okay this is one of the very crucial mantras if your jupiter is not well placed in your horoscope or if you feel you lack jupiterian traits in your life then please do this mantra 108 times every day morning it will really help you okay then there is this mantra for a uh, vyas dev which you can chant okay so the mantra is om jum sah vyam veda vyasaya namah sah jum om okay i will write it down in the description and how you should be doing this mantra is you should uh, sit in the morning in the brahma muhurt uh, and this mantra should be only done in brahma muhurt okay om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya you can do uh, in any other time also uh, preferably in the morning of course but this number 6 the vyas dev's mantra should be only done in the morning okay even if it is not brahma muhurt not a problem but it you should not do it later okay only do it in the morning so what you should do is you should uh, sit uh, in a chatai or in a cot or you can take a cloth and you should face the eastern direction okay when you face the eastern direction then that's the rising direction of the sun so try to face in the east or in the northeast whichever is possible for you and uh, then you should light a lamp actually ghee lamp okay so once you light that then you should uh, pray to vyas dev who is the author of all these scriptures and he is a shakti avesh avatar of lord vishnu and then actually you can uh, you can close your eyes and then you should uh, focus on this this part of okay, the agya chakra you can focus here okay sometimes people have difficulty focusing here so they can focus here or somewhere here but the thing is you should try to focus in this point okay 
but if you are a beginner then uh, you will have pain when you try to focus your eyes here so if you have too much pain then don't do it gradually do it okay slowly and you should do this for 108 times okay and om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya also 108 times okay and then the next mantra is uh, specifically for your guru your guru mantra you must chant or if you are not having a guru you can chant this mantra om gurave namah okay this is a very important mantra for you but this mantra will really help you these three mantras they will really help you to uh, get help from uh, god actually okay because these are not uh, these are primarily related to your gurus actually these two mantras okay vyas des mantra and this om gurave nama this mantra then number 8 this is very crucial this is actually what jupiter represents at a gross level and at a subtle level you know sharpening your intelligence by reading scriptures like the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam every day for minimum 30 minutes and whenever you get an opportunity you should also try to uh, donate these uh, scriptures to others okay so if somebody has a birthday or a marriage anniversary so instead of giving them uh, stuff like uh, stuff which maybe they will never use <laughs> yes have you do you have that experience that people have gifted you something which you never used actually it's just lying in your home okay i mean just like that so why to give something uh, which will eventually dwindle and fade off okay so the best thing to give somebody is a bhagavad gita or if you are a muslim watching this you can give the quran or if you are a christian you can give the bible or dharma pada torah or guru granth sahib or what, whatever i mean any anything that inspires you to become a better human being spiritually that you can gift okay that you can donate to somebody okay and uh, if you are connected to the vedic tradition then Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. These two are very, 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 very crucial. Okay. No compromise with this. You can read the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. That also you can read. But these two are the most important books. Okay. Because Bhagavad Gita is the sar of all the Upanishads. And Srimad Bhagavatam was written by Vyasdev at the highest level of his maturity. All right. So please read these two books and I will give you two links from Amazon down in the description section. If you wish, you can also have a look at those. Okay. <clears throat> Number nine, this is very important. Traveling to holy places. Okay. And doing spiritual practices there. So I had made a video a long time back for uh, this uh, going to Kanchipuram and doing fast there. Okay. So it's very crucial. So when you go to holy places, you should try to go. Uh, once you reach there, you should not wear shoe or chappal, anything like this. Okay. You should try to walk barefoot and do parikrama. And uh, you should parikrama means going around the holy place, especially like Vindavan or uh, Mathura or Banara. So whatever you, wherever you want to go. And then you should go and fast there. Okay. So fasting is very important. That will help you. And uh, you should go and give donations there to whatever extent possible. Okay. And uh, do more spiritual activities in a holy place because uh, holy places are especially uh, empowered places where God had performed his, his lilas. Okay. So therefore, they are very potent uh, for uh, enlightening ourselves actually and uh, taking us high in spiritual life. Okay. Then number 10 is uh, worshipping the form of God. So puja, if you want, you can do that's known as archan. That is one of the nine processes of uh, spiritual elevation, spiritual connectivity with God. So many times uh, people, uh, they, they have this Brahman thread, Brahman diksha they have. So if you, if you have uh, and if your guru has authorized you, then you can do puja. And if you are not having a Brahman thread or you are not, uh, following the other things like you are eating meat and all this so if you are not comfortable then at least you should attend uh, somebody who is doing puja okay that's very important because puja is like a exclusive uh, service to god himself all right so that's very important number 11 is the worshiping tulsi devi this is very important in every indian household ideally uh, when vedic culture used to be there uh, they had Tulsi Devi and they used to do Pradakshina always, okay? Because Tulsi Devi in uh, Vrindavan, in uh, the spiritual world, she is the one who allots different services, okay? What Yashoda will, Mai will do, what Radha will do, what Lalita will do, what Vishakha will do, 
what Madhu Mangal will do, what you know, Sudama will do, what Sri Rama will do. So Tulsi Devi is the one which allots different services. Okay, she allots seva. She writes a list of who will do what services for Krishna. Okay, and she is the one who does all the managerial planning of the spiritual world. So therefore, if we worship her, then uh, we can actually uh, be transported to the spiritual world and she can engage us there okay so you can uh, you can have a small tulsi plant in your home if you want and uh, you can water it every day okay that's very good and you can uh, pay obeisances to tulsi maharani tulsi devi this is the best thing you can do and you can pray to her that she blesses you all right the number 12 is uh, singing bhajans, stotrams and shlokas. All right? There are so many bhajans you can uh, sing. You can also search in YouTube. You will find. Then stotrams. You know, so many stotrams are there you can find in YouTube. And then so many shlokas you can find in Bhagavad Gita. You can find in Srimad Bhagavatam. All right? They will help you to sharpen your intelligence. The shlokas are like missiles. You know, So whenever there is a problem, you should remember one shloka. All right? Then number 13 is offering bhoga and taking prasadam. So ideally you sh we should not uh, eat anything which is not offered to God. So to whatever extent possible, we should cook without onion, garlic and meat, fish and eggs, of course. And uh, without onion, garlic and we should offer it to God, uh, Lord Vishnu. And then we should accept that as prasad. Okay. So the bhoga is cooked and it is offered and it is accepted as prasad. So that is also very important. That will uh, give you very fast advancement, rapid advancement in spiritual life. Then number 14 is uh, appreciating the good in others because Jupiter also represents goodness. Okay, So uh, we should uh, not try to uh, find faults with others every time. Okay, uh, Of course, if, uh, if we are at an authority position, we might have to do that sometimes. Okay, if we are in a leadership role, we might have to find faults with our subordinates. But apart from that, in general, I am saying, okay, criticizing some political leader just because you don't like that party. Uh, in India, you know, the the Congress people in, insult the BJP, and the BJP will always insult the Congress. So this, you should not be a part of all this uh, rubbish. Okay, so stay away from all this and try to see the good in people. Okay. This is in general, I'm saying, okay, for everybody, your mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, anybody, okay. Number 15, this is very, very, very crucial. Many people I know, they, they don't give importance to this, number 15, okay, what is that? Contemplating on scriptural truths, okay. So this is, you know, Smaranam and Mananam actually. So this is very important. So whenever you go to some lecture you know, or you are reading the Bhagavad Gita, okay, so uh, it's very crucial that you uh, not only just read and you just hear from this here and throw it from there. No, it's not like that. When you are in bus, you are traveling or you are in your car, you know, taxi, you're sitting alone doing nothing, then don't do anything. Don't put Bollywood or Hollywood music. Just pull off your earphones. And just think, oh, today what did I hear in the morning? Mm, Hanuman Chalisa. What does Hanuman Chalisa say? Vishnu Sastanam, what does it say? What is the meaning? Okay. Contemplate on the scriptural truths. Just don't read it like a formality and understand the meaning. You have a brain. You are not a robot. Okay. So don't behave like robots. Like, oh, people I know, they, were, they are reading Vishnu Sastanam. Very good. I also have the playlist. But... They don't know the meaning. So what is the use of uh, reading if you don't know the meaning, right? So that is why I started the Vishnu Sastanam actually. Because many times people tell me they don't know the meaning. So now they tell me that after hearing those videos, they are actually understanding what, what is going on actually. Okay. So uh, contemplate and uh, try to understand what is going on okay, in the scriptures. What is the mood of the scriptures? It's very important that you understand, all right? Then number 16, this is Vandanam, prayers to God and your Gurus. Okay, this is very, very, very crucial. Prayer is like uh, uh, cultivating a personal relationship with, with God, okay, so and with your Gurus also. So if if you are not able to uh, pray nicely, then it, it might mean that you have too much ego <laughs> or your mind is always distracted, okay. So offering prayers is very crucial actually. And one of the famous examples from the scriptures is uh, Prahlad Maharaj or you know, 
Vidur is also there, and we also have the example of Akru. Okay, so you can study about these three personalities. They will really help you and uh, give you better understanding. Then Queen Kunti's prayers. You can type in Google Queen Kunti exotic astrology. Okay, I have the playlist. So Queen Kunti's prayers will really help you to develop that mood of uh, humility and surrender. They will actually do wonders for you. The number 17, fasting till 6 p.m. on Thursdays and taking turmeric or haldi or wearing yellow or white. Okay, so these are a bit more physical remedies which you can do. Thursday is the day of Jupiter and uh, taking haldi actually turmeric, it enhances your Jupiter. Okay, and turmeric is anyways very good actually. And uh, you can at times wear yellow or white if you like to or if you don't like, you can eat it. <laughs> all right then number 18 guiding your juniors properly because jupiter is also the significator of the fifth house along with the ninth house all right so jupiter's main duty is to pass on the knowledge so you take the knowledge from your seniors from your gurus and you pass it unadulterated to your juniors okay this is what you should do so when you guide your juniors properly it can be in any field then that will also enhance your Jupiter. They will feel that you are a very good guide, okay? And only a good disciple can be a good guide. Should I repeat? Only a good disciple can be a good guide. So if you have not heard from your Guru properly, you cannot be a good uh, guru, guru for somebody, okay? Number 19, numerology-wise, 3, 12, 21, 29, or 30. These days, you can... Now do more spiritual activities, okay? Because these are days of Jupiter, okay? Then, number 20 is uh, at least 10% uh, of your uh, monthly income after taxes should be given to a spiritual cause as a donation, okay? This is very important because otherwise uh, one day we have to leave this material world and we have to leave, uh, not the material world, this material body. <laughs> So if we learn to cultivate detachment by giving a part of our monthly salary every month, uh, so then uh, it will be relatively easier for us to leave our bodies at the end of life. Okay, or Otherwise, uh, we will have a lot of struggle and uh, it will be very difficult for us. Okay, So money is uh, a very important factor or you can uh, offer some help or if you, if you are having uh, less finances and if you have more income you can donate 20 percent also okay number 21 you should double all the 20 activities which i said on special days like ekadashis or you know, janmashtami or shivratri or balram jayanti or adhashtami or ram naomi hanuman jayanti so these special days like holy places you know they are also empowered days actually um, so that because it is associated with the appearance of some uh, great personality, either God or some of the great gurus or saints. So, so therefore, uh, when we utilize these days, especially for uh, doing spiritual activities, then we will see that our spiritual life is really blooming. Okay. So do read more of Srimad Bhagavatam, then read more Bhagavad Gita, do more chanting of mantras and uh, Associate more with your gurus, fast more, uh, take more prasad after fasting. <laughs> all right, uh, circumambulate the tulsi more and do all these activities actually. Okay, you can sing more bhajans, sing more stotrams, uh, recite more shlokas on these special days. Okay, so these remedies will really help you to uh, improve your Jupiter and you will you will have a great material life also along with uh, other spiritual benefits which you will have if you do all these remedies okay now you may not be able to do all of this but you can at least do some of these okay at least half of them then can be done very easily okay so you can choose and decide whichever you want you want to do but ideal is if you try to do all of them all right thank you very much for your patient hearing and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you uh want a consultation from me then you can go to the website down in the description section and if you want to see the remedies for venus sun and moon you can find it down in the description section okay thank you very much wish you all the best